Friday, Friday, Friday. That means today on the Crazy Picker Life, we're going to be talking about some sort of topic having to do with your business and my business, buying and selling eBay. Today, it's going to be predator versus prey. Which one are you today on? The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. Welcome, fellow pickers and would-be adventurers. Friday Dealer here. On the Crazy Picker Life, we're going to talk about predator versus prey. Okay, so first, I'm going to have to kind of define what I mean by that. When I think of predator, first thing that comes to mind is the, I believe, Arnold Schwarzenegger and supporting cast movie from the 80s. I, I can't remember if it was Danny Glubber, Arnold Schwarzenegger, some other big meatheads. <laughs> anyway, this big thing from space that looked like uh, something you wouldn't want to ever see anywhere at any time if it was moving comes down and uh, kicks butt for a while and of course I think uh, man either, either overcomes it or kills it I can't remember but that thing was badass it came for a reason I forget why but <laughs> formidable right and most of the big meatheads that were out to get the thing ended up as prey right so that's that's sort of one definition of predator now in today's world you got all kinds of weird predator drones and predators going after kids and predator the word predator is used for a lot of things negatively okay what I want to talk about today is more along the lines of the animal kingdom I've got a prop here and my drawing <laughs> that was supposed to start out as a lion and it sort of ended up like a alligator snake eagle gosh uh shark <laughs> it's up on the hill it's up high and it is looking down over the sheep here and of course in my example it's not about the predator eating the prey eating the sheep it's really about the predator competing in the arena of buying and selling classified ads thrift stores collectors private collections flea markets, rummage sales, garage sales, anywhere where stuff is sold, the predator is there competing for this stuff with the rest of the people out there, the masses, the people who doodle and dawdle and pick and poke and window shop and hem and haw and wish upon a dream wishing is for chumps the predator takes a different approach than the prey and in reality it is serious because the items that the predator takes the prey don't get and that's like food so you're you're really uh, you're really against the the prey, in a sense, for the good stuff. It's a battle for the kingdom of buying and selling. It's a battle for business. You're battling every day. A lot of people that are down here don't realize it's a battle, and if they do realize it, all they do is get grumpy. The predator. They realize it's a battle. That's why they're up here. They're not up here because they want to say, hey, look at me. They're up here because they want to see everything. They've got a bigger picture. They don't even hardly see the prey. 
and all the people, here's what they see. They're above it. They're looking at this. It's really not about these people or the prey. It's really just about seeing what's available for the buying and selling system, the buying and selling business. Okay, artist. <laughs> artist, I'm not. <laughs> artist, I am not. And it's funny because we do homeschool our children and we have a mixed bag. Neither myself or my wife, Lon, are artists of any kind. Uh, I have a bit of a technical background, so I can do some straight line technical drawings and shapes and things. I don't know. I haven't seen Lon draw much, but I'm assuming she's not much of an artist or she would have shown me in the last 25 years. Two of my kids at least are pretty darn good artists. They can draw and paint and do all these different things. And then the other ones are like me. You've seen what I can do. <laughs> I do more damage than good. Okay, so in our business, there are predators like myself that take things in the buying and selling arena much more serious. We have hardwired, our, hardwired ourselves to a different approach for this business. Partially through trial and error, partially through training our mindset, partially through paying attention when we're out there to people, places, and things, partially through not paying attention to a whole bunch of garbage out there that a lot of people pay attention to that clouds the arena. And if you pay attention to 90% of the stuff out there, people, places, and things, you will not be successful in this business. You will be spinning your tires. The prey, on the other hand, that are out there part-time, full-time, struggling in the buying and selling business, looking at the buying and selling business, watching the buying and selling business, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And I'll tell you, um, a lot of these things that I have developed in my buying and selling game are not unique. There are other buyers and sellers out there. Many of you have many of the same characteristics. But I do know this, if you want to be successful in this business, you don't have to be mean, you don't have to be disrespectful, you don't have to chew the head off of everybody, you don't have to rip stuff out of people's hands. Predator is stealthy. Predator knows what they're after. A predator doesn't just wipe everything out, they're surgical. A predator knows what they're after, they get it, that's it, they're gone, done, see ya. The prey are still milling around wondering what happened, where did George go? That predator took him. <laughs> well, we'll just keep going on with our day. <laughs> oh, we have turkey vultures out here. We have turkeys, wild turkeys, and then we have turkey vultures. They look pretty similar, except the turkey vultures are the predators. And they wait for something to get away from the pack, and then they swoop in and eat it. <laughs> I don't want to be a turkey vulture, but they go about their business and then they're done. They go on to the next thing. It's part of the cycle. In the buying and selling game, you do need to be a predator or on the other side of that, you are the prey. All right, I'm going to set this tripod up. I have some notes. I'm going to go into, I don't know, 10 or 12 things that I think define predators in the buying and selling world. And on the flip side of that, although I've trained my mind not to think of the rest of the people in the buying and selling world, I just, I just try to do my thing and I've trained myself 
almost so much and this is how I do it, I don't even hear or think about all that other stuff. I avoid it. A lot of it is negativity. A lot of it is apathy. A lot of it is BS. A lot of it is whining. A lot of it is simply lazy. So I try to stay away from that. And a lot of it actually, if I listen too much, it bothers me. <laughs> so I tune it out. Let me set this up. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. So a couple other real quick things. You know, people think that predators are all bad, right? I don't consider myself a predator, but my actions towards buying and selling are predator-like, okay? I am uh, aggressive. I also have a soft side. I have a gentle side. I've held babies. I've changed diapers. I homeschool. I talk caringly and lovingly to my wife. I have a lot of sides of me that are not predatory. And when you're predatory, I don't think you have to have the evil teeth barred, but your actions have that edge. Your actions have to be aggressive. You have to know what you want. Snooze, you lose, okay? Uh, on the other end, um, if you're timid, if you're soft, if you just go where everybody else goes, if you just do what everybody else does, if you just listen to everybody else that's not successful, if you don't follow somebody that's successful and start doing some of the same things that they do, what do you think you're going to get? You're going to get the same old result. And you might even throw up your hands and go, well, <laughs> I can't do it. I didn't do it. This is how it is. All that stuff I see out there, including dealer, must be fake. <laughs> I, you know, I went down to the store and I walked around on the aisles and I didn't find anything. So I can't sell anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh. Now, when people think of, like, the show on TV, Storage Wars, they think of Dave Hester. That would be a side of Predator that, first of all, I think they've made him look more the evil villain than he really is. I think he's a, a pretty good businessman. I do think... Uh, I do think he needs to get out and have a little more fun. He's a little wound, a little tight. But for the most part, even though they made him look like a villain... He's a good businessman. He's he's a predator. And a lot of people are turned off by that, probably because the way he's portrayed, and he does have a little bit of an a-hole edge on him. You don't have to be like that, but 80% of his actions are right on. Some people just don't have a good personality. I like win-win situations. Even though I'm a predator, I like win-win situations. If I can do a win-win and be a predator action type person in the buy-sell, that's where I want to be. But I'm not going to come out on the, on the pillow soft side of something. That just isn't it. That's not a win-win for me. So a win-win for me is I win and then I leave that person in a good in a good way okay I don't abuse that person I don't uh, cheat that person I don't cheat that situation I don't leave it so I can't come back I don't slam the door on their foot I don't turn my back and go humph <laughs> you get it <laughs> you get it all right I got notes I'm trying to keep this to an hour I think we had 10 minutes on the intro here we go in no predict particular order, this is what I think are some of the differences or discussion to be had about where you need to look if you want to be a predator in the buying and selling business, you want to be at the top of the food chain, you want to be the eagle that eats well, you want to be the lion that feeds their lion cubs, you want to be the bow constrictor who has a fat stomach you want to be the big ass shark and all the other little sharks are just like sitting way towards the beach and you're out there eating the big stuff you want to be the predator in the buying and selling game 
these are the things that you need to work on. Number one, negotiating. Okay, negotiating is a learned skill. You need to know how the numbers work. Bottom line, when I go into a negotiation, I know before I start talking how much I want to pay for something. And then the secret of no negotiations is to get your price or better. You also need to know, as the negotiation goes on, how to add things to it, add items to it, so maybe you start with one item and then you start grouping other items in there. Or you need to ask questions to open that negotiation up in your favor. Communication during a negotiation is key. If you let your emotions get the best of you, if you meet somebody who is your equal or better at negotiating and you don't, back off a little bit and let them run their course you just keep going in there banging your head against their head well they might be the ram with the horns and you might be a lion and you might be ramming your head against something harder than yours you might break your head you need to know how to do that negotiating dance this talk is not about that but this talk is about getting you to understand that it's important. If you are a weak negotiator, if you always accept the price that's on something, if you typically pay sticker price, if you typically ask what something is worth and they say $20 and you say, okay, you may be a weak negotiator. There are so many ways to get a better price. You need to learn some, okay? You need to experiment. You need to listen to people that are negotiating. Read a book on negotiating. Listen to a, uh, a series on negotiating. There's plenty of stuff on YouTube about negotiating. Practice it. Practice it in other arenas. Practice it with your spouse. Practice it with your kids. Practice it with yourself. <laughs> But the bottom line is a predator, somebody who is strong in the field in buying and selling, is strong in negotiating. Now negotiating isn't punching somebody, grabbing the thing, and saying, I want this for free. You don't beat people up physically in negotiating. You don't even verbally beat them up. It's a dance. It's a give and take. Let the person talk. Give them something. Make an offer. Listen carefully. Where is the dance going? Are you leading the dance right now? Are you being spun around endlessly in the dance, not knowing what's going on, flung right off the ball the ballroom? Are you sitting over on the side of the dance floor, twiddling your thumbs? hoping you can get a dance. <laughs> Negotiating is key. Something to think about. All right, these are in no particular order and maybe I'll get Rev in here, maybe I won't. If this talk is great, you can give me a thumbs up at any time. If it isn't, maybe there's a button you can press and throw me in a volcano. I'm gonna try to negotiate back out of there though. <laughs> Getting out early. Okay. Now, I think planning is important. And I think I've got a question or a comment on here on planning. These are in no particular order. Getting out early. Okay. I'll give you a quick example. There were a couple rummage sales in town today. One was listed as starting at 1 o'clock. And the ad in the paper was like 40 years of stuff we're cleaning out. So I'm like, all right, sounds good. 1 o'clock. I happened to be driving around because we went running this morning. We went by at 11 a.m. It was sort of on our way. And they were just setting up. The garage door was still mostly down. There was a car in the driveway not ready to go. If they were ready to go, I would have went in there early, 11 a.m. Too early? Maybe, but I happened to be out there. 
Uh, there was another rummage sale in town that I didn't know about, but we saw the sign, so I made a note. Predator made a note. There's another rummage sale in town. I'm not going now, but hey, that's going to make my trip count. So I went back at 1220, and it turned out to be mostly a bust. I bought some uh, ceramic tile <laughs> for three bucks. Three boxes, three bucks. And it was, a, it was a poor rummage sale. It certainly was not 40 years worth of stuff that I would have ever had. If somebody would buy 40 years of my stuff, they'd get a, a much bigger thrill for the dollar. <laughs> So I remembered in the back of my mind though, where's that other sale? And we went, we drove by the sign and the sign was terrible. It was curled over where you couldn't tell what the heck it said. So I had banana peeler go out and pull it up and we found out where it was and we're like, oh no, it was going since eight this morning. So we still went out there and uh, there wasn't a lot there, but there was a game there. We ended up paying $5 for a sealed Wii U Zelda game that I just listed on uh, Amazon for 44 bucks. So the backup plan worked. But the point is we got out there early. When we were out there early, we happened to notice another sign that led to us going there. The first one was a bust. The second one we decided to go to since we were already out. Boom, 25 bucks profit or something. When it sells, things like that on Amazon tend to sell pretty quick, especially if they're new sealed and shrink. <laughs> Okay, so get out early. When we go to the flea market in Denver, it opens in the winter a little later, and in the summer it opens early. It is mountain time. We are central time. We gain, do we gain an hour? We gain an hour on the way there, but still we need to be there between 7 and 8 a.m. or we miss the best deals. That means we got to get up and get out right around 4.45, 5 a.m., if we stroll in there at 10 a.m., which we've done, we do not come out with a van full. When we go early, we go in and get a van full. We get two shopping carts full, full, full. Everybody else is walking around and having a good time. We might see one or two other pickers with more than three or four items. And we got a shopping cart full twice. Predator versus prey. I don't know. I don't, I can't, I, you know, if everybody was a predator and buying and selling, I guess I'd have a harder time. It's too easy as far as I'm concerned, but I think that's the mindset, the combined mindset of the predator. They don't think like everybody else thinks. I don't think like everybody else thinks. It drives my wife crazy. But she is the same way with mall shopping. She's a predator shopper at the mall. <laughs> Why can't you see I'm a predator buy sell shopper? I don't know. I don't know. The prey never knew what you're, what you're doing. They don't understand it or they would be predators too. You want to make money in any business, you need to be a predator. Minus the bad connotation of what a predator, some of the definition of predator is. But a predator swoops in and gets the deal, don't they? They see it from afar. They know this isn't it over here. They know it's not over there. They see it. They size up the situation. They size up the people involved. They're ready to talk to those people. They swoop in and get it. That's a predator. Get out early. Better early than late. Get out early to the right place, too. Don't just get up early and sit there. Get out early and go someplace where there's good stuff, or potentially good stuff. Working until done. All right. Now, I don't know how to uh, make some sort of a story go along with this, but a lot of people who are not successful in the buying and selling business have the mindset of a nine to five job or whatever. A lot of people are in what I would call the employee mindset. And I understand, I've worked for people, I've been an employee, there is comfort there. There, is, there are benefits there. There are people there. There is money there. There's safety there. There's 
a lot of things there. I'm not knocking it. But if you want to remove yourself from the sheep, <laughs> and don't take that the wrong way if you're working for somebody, if you're an employee, but if you want to remove yourself from that, you have to think differently. You have to think, I'm going to do whatever this job is that I stumble into till it's done. Okay? Now, in the early days, before we found some fishing holes that had a lot of stuff, we had to fish for stuff to buy and sell long and hard. Long and hard. Hard and long. For example, we would go into the flea market in Denver and we would get there sometime before 8 a.m. We'd put three, four hours in there Whatever we bought, great. Then we would start hitting bomb, 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 thrift stores, thrift stores, antique stores, other stops. Endless, endless, endless. Maybe four o'clock we'd hit and get a burger. Then we'd hit them again and again and again. And we already gained an hour. So by the time they started closing at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., we would start searching. All right, who's open the latest? Is it thrift? Is it uh, Savers? Is it Goodwill? Where's our last stop? And we'd, we'd get our last stop, and it would be 9 or 10 o'clock at night. We would be three hours from home, and we're losing an hour. We would pull back into town at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Long day, and we worked hard, and we found good stuff. We always, 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 always would find good stuff, along with a bunch of medium stuff, along with some learning items. <laughs> but the predator who wants to succeed out there gets out there and does what it takes until you're done. Until you're done. Whatever that means. If you don't get it the first day, you better darn go back the second day. Your cubs will starve. <laughs> Your business will starve. You need good stuff. <sighs> Let's see if there's some other examples. Well, we have been on a lot of picking trips early on. Before we started staying in hotels, we stayed in the van. It was me and Wheeler and sometimes Banana Peeler, and we'd go on these three-day junk jaunts where it's rummage sales and people selling stuff and, and lots of miles and way out there. We would sleep in the van. And we would go, 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 go until we almost passed out. We'd sleep in the van. It was hot. There were bugs. Sometimes it was raining, and we'd wake up, just try to get ourselves go and try to get some breakfast and we'd be out at it again 7 a.m. all the way until it was dark or even after we loved it so much but we were hungry we were early in the predator game we were doing what it took to become an expert predator in the buying and selling game now when we go it's a little more cushy we got to be careful not to forget our roots but we stay in a nice hotel with air conditioning and it feels better when you wake up the next day. We eat good food. We don't go out quite as long. We know where some good things are. We've eliminated 90% of the background chatter of all types. And we narrowed our view down on the 10% that makes us money. And it's a little bit like momentum. Once you got it, it's easy. Once you are the predator, it's easy. Now you gotta look over your shoulder once in a while and you gotta check your blind spots and you gotta keep sharp, keep those claws sharp. That's part of keeping momentum, that's part of doing your job, but it does get easier. Breaking free from the idea of being prey all the way up to where you are the predator. You're right there in the top pack. You run into somebody else that's in the top pack, you just acknowledge them and move on. They acknowledge you and move on. There's no fight. You can recognize those people. There is no fight when you're the top dog. The fight is against yourself. 
the day-to-day -day grind. That's a whole different story. But the fight is not against other predators. The fight is not against the prey. You, you do your thing. You don't even have to worry about that anymore. Why the heck would I make these videos? I don't even worry about it anymore. Follow what I do. Become a predator. I don't care. When we see each other out there, I'll be like, hey, how's it going? I got a half handful. I'm just going to go over here and fill it up. Me too, they say. I'm going to go over here and fill it up. There's enough for both of us. Okay, watch out. There's a whole bunch of sheep over there. Oh, we don't care about that. We'll just go right through there. <laughs> okay. Survey whole area. All right. Now, I didn't do a very good job of this last weekend. And I went to bed, oh, I don't know, 1 a.m., and I had, uh, you know, I had popcorn and pizza and a couple of beers. And so when I got myself out of bed at 7 a.m., I was a little groggy. And I, I was a little bit out of practice. And I got up and I wanted to go to uh, a certain rummage sale that started early. It sounded good in the paper, right? So I got myself there at like 7.40 a.m., and I walked up and there were people there and I'm like, wow, people are here early, you know. I'm early, but there's other people here early. I, that was my first realization, right? And so I sort of surveyed the situation and my first initial reaction is, it ain't nothing special. So I turned off a little bit and I looked out in the driveway and I didn't look enough in the garage, but I didn't see anything in the driveway. I walked in the garage and all of a sudden, predator senses took over probably because something was dropped right in my lap people were all around me the prey the sheeples are all around me milling about nothing and right in front of me are these two beautiful money-making airplane models 50 cents two bucks my hands went right on them I am now carrying those <laughs> <laughs> Those are now mine. I don't care what else is here. Roar! <laughs> I couldn't believe they were there. But it didn't take me long to react, I'll tell you that. Survey the whole area. What I should have done is I should have just kept walking, and if I didn't see anything, I shouldn't have slowed down and looked closer at stuff that potentially was ugh, in the driveway. I should have went right in there and just made a loop and I would have saw him right away. I would have been there a couple minutes sooner. I could have very well been out predatored on those. Somebody should have grabbed those. Somebody should have grabbed those. But fortunately, I was with the sheep and I was the only predator at that time. I'm, I'm surprised at it, but... So if I would have done the survey of the whole situation, I would have got those in my hands a few minutes earlier. I wouldn't have missed out. If I was the only one there, it wouldn't have mattered. And then, you know, I could have looked around a little more. And then what I did is I started to ask more questions about these models. Do they have more? Do you have cameras? You know, I started going through the predator checklist, which really is communicating with your seller and trying to maximize your trip. All right, pause. Okay, survey the whole area. Don't get sidetracked on something that is not going to make you money. Sure, you might have never seen the purple fluffy uh, sweater from Happy Days that has holes in it and is signed by Aaron Moran uh, that's worth zero, but it's so cool. You might just stand there and stare at that for 10 minutes. And meanwhile, you go in and there's a lineup of people with stuff in their arms that you could have made 100 bucks for each person if you would have got in there and quit staring at the fuzzy purple sweater. Whatever. Survey your area. You might run into some other predators. You can't always count on sheep being everywhere, although sheep do seem to be everywhere. Size up your competition. Okay, now you cannot always judge a book by its cover. Uh, some people have judged my book by my cover, <laughs> and, and 
they ended up being prey. <laughs> And it wasn't always that way because I was right there with the sheep at some point when I was early in this game and I missized up some competition and I got my feet stomped a couple times and I got my bell rung a couple times and I got my wallet stung a couple times and I bought stuff a couple times because I missized up my competition. Now, who's, who's your competition? Who are you sizing up? Well, you're sizing up your surroundings. You're sizing up your sellers. You're sizing up the other people that are milling around. You're sizing up the whole situation you're in. A lot of this, I just do on the fly. And there are times I go out picking for enjoyment. I just go out, no pressure. Just kind of sizing up a new territory, just enjoying the day, see what I find. I don't always go out full bore. However, me just going out like this, da 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 da, -da is full bore for many people. <laughs> if I go out full bore, watch out. <laughs> That's all I can say. So if I'm full bore, full on, full steam, looking for stuff, gotta have stuff, gonna find it if it's there, that's, I'm sizing everything up. I'm sizing every little thing. And sometimes it's as easy as asking a question. You got an item, you might say, hey, hey, do you know anything about this? And they're like, I don't know anything about that. I just want to get rid of it. <laughs> Woo! Okay, what do you take for it? Well, I was hoping to get 10. How about two? How about five? You know, win-win. You don't need to say, how about 50 cents? But the point is, you have a mouth, use it. You have ears, use it. You have hands, use it. You have a smile, use it. You can move around, use it, size it up, talk it up, see what's going on. You don't want to clash with people either. So you do, part of your sizing up is, who are you working with? And I said, who are you working with, not who are you devouring? Who are you working with? If there's an age difference, can you speak their language? If there's a, you know, education difference, can you speak their language? If there's a, a sex difference, they're the opposite sex as you, can you speak their language? That would be better. That's how you size people up. You need to communicate with them. It's not about pounding them. Bum, 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 bum. Hey, I'm sizing you up. <laughs> no, it's about... Becoming friendly with them, becoming communicative. Now, they want to sell you something, so they've got that interest in mind, but you still need to open them up to your world and what you're there for. No, you're not there to buy the whole rummage sale. We can sell you everything and load up that van, dealer. Well, I don't want everything. I look for specific stuff, I'm telling them, and then I open the door. I like cameras and old computers like Apple's and Commodore 64's and I'm looking for you see what I'm saying beer signs oh no not the ones that are all plastic but the older ones I get leads galore once I start talking to somebody I get leads galore the predator moves on from one place to the next I've got a whole big place to hunt once I open that up People want my phone number all the time. They want to text me stuff all the time. I call people sometimes. I get more stuff than I want. A lot of people say, where do you find all your stuff? I got more stuff than I could ever want. Now, I work hard and smart to get my stuff. I'm not going to give it away to you. I'm not going to I'm not gonna buy a bunch of stuff and sell it to you for nothing. I'm in the business of buying and selling for a profit. But you too can find plenty of stuff. Predator. Size up your competition. Having enough resources. Okay. Now, this is an interesting story. When I was in high school, I was probably 16, 10th grade, something like that. Tall, thin, somewhat athletic, somewhat nerdy. And I hung with some guys that were pretty rough and tough. 
and some other groups of people, big high school, 600 per class, couple thousand people in the high school, some other people thought I would have been rough and tough be hanging around these other rough and tough guys. They started to figure out I wasn't so rough and tough and so one dude, a shorter dude, short and stout and mouthy, decided that I was his target, right? And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna mouth back a little bit. You look kind of rough and tough and you got a funky name. Your, your name is Pizza. And, uh, you know, you hang around some boxers and tough people and things like that. So this went on for a couple of days and finally he got me outside somewhere and, and uh, pushed me and I, I got back up and he knocked my glasses off and then we went swinging. And yeah, he could box. And no, I couldn't. However, um, being a sort of a predator mindset, I played the game enough and I clocked him once. And the end result is he left me alone and the end result is he had a black eye. So he misjudged me a little bit. I misjudged him a little bit. I was not the aggressor, but when the predator came, I was not the prey. And so having enough resources, I knew that even though I didn't want to fight this person, I knew I had enough resources and stamina and uh, a long reach and the ability to uh, keep swinging. I knew I had the resources to, to weather this thing. And I did take some pretty good hits to the head that hurt like snick. The next day I was like, oh my gosh, that really hurts. You really club me. But I didn't have a black eye. <laughs> I met this guy like five or eight years later and he still was sort of the same but we talked a little bit and he was he was all right you know a lot of dumb stuff happens in high school I didn't have a lot of fights I had a couple usually you know I just I I made somebody mad and I didn't really know I made a man <laughs> okay in the picking game having enough resources right well you can't show up at a gunfight with a knife, unless you're really good with the knife, I guess. If you go picking and your expectations are too high and you only bring 10 bucks with you, you might not get the big deal that comes up for 50 bucks. If you only bring 50 bucks with you and you show up and it is the deal, it's, you could buy for 50 bucks two or three of the items and you can make good money, but there's 50 items and you can get all 50 instead of for 50 bucks for two or three of them, you can get all 50 for 500 bucks, which would be like a third the price if you bought them all and they're all good and you don't have the 500 bucks. Too bad on you. You must have the resources in this game. You must be able to differentiate between when you should use them and when you should not use them. You don't want to just buy junk, and that will happen though. You will buy junk during your learning adventures. But if you develop the predator mindset, you will know when it is time to pull out the extra money, you will hit those days. In fact, I go out and I expect it. So I had $85, $90 in my wallet early this morning. And I knew when I go out to this rummage sale or these two rummage sales, I knew that wasn't enough. Now in some cases, or most cases, it would be enough. I ended up only spending $8. But I knew it wasn't enough if I ran into a bigger deal. And I did not want to not be able to afford it. So I went and drew out $300, and I went with $385. That typically will be enough for a couple rummage sales. Now, we ran into one three weeks ago, uh, four weeks ago, where we bought a bunch of camera stuff in Largers. Uh, 
and we racked up a bill of about $375 just at a rummage sale slash estate sale, rummage sale. I think they called it a rummage sale. It was fairly professionally ran. Uh, it was a good one, but going in, you don't know. If I showed up with 85 bucks, I would have been in trouble. I would not have been able to leverage and make the deal because we looked at the enlargers, we looked at the cameras, they're like, well, what, what are you interested in? Just the enlargers, just the cameras? You know, what are you interested in? We're like, well, probably interested in it all because we had the confidence that we were gonna buy it no matter what. We had the money, we had the resources. Where if you don't have the money or you're timid about that or your budget is $20, you are not gonna get that deal. You are not gonna get the lion size deal. That deal for $385, it's like resale. We're gonna sell that stuff for like $1,500. We're already, I've already sold 500 of it and there's a lot of it left to list. Wheeler hasn't listed the cameras yet. Uh, there's some other stuff that's listed that didn't sell. It's a monster deal. It's a great deal. It's good stuff. It's good, clean, saleable stuff. There was nothing much to clean up there. There was nothing much to, to deal with. It was, it was good stuff. But you need to have the resources when you find those deals. You need to. Now, if I went there and I looked at the stuff and I was unsure about it, I wouldn't probably have bought it. So it's not about going there and seeing something and wishing it was good. It's not about, hey, I, I've got my $500 with me. This sort of looks like a good deal. When I went, I had the expertise. I knew it was a good deal. I knew it was a good deal. I had the resources. There was no risk. I was going to double my money, triple my money, quadruple my money. I wasn't going to lose money. I wasn't going to waste my time. Okay? So that's, that's the difference. There was no need to be timid. But the point is I brought enough resources, okay? So if you are still learning this business, that deal might not be for you yet. But within your scope of understanding, when you stumble on something, and for sure you know some things about something, <laughs> you can't be timid you can't not have the resources you need to capitalize on that as you get better in this business your scope of understanding of stuff is better you will be able to make that decision easier on more items a broader uh, array of items earlier in the game don't take those chances but you still should have the money along in case you run into the things you know we knew the camera stuff. I knew some of the other stuff that we bought. We bought those, those robot banks. <laughs> those are good too. Okay, go where the action is. All right, so if you're a lion, predator, and you know this way, there's a bunch of sheep and there's somebody guarding them with guns and you know this way, there's a bunch of caribou and they're just out there and you can eat any one of them you want anytime. And you know this way is the desert and there ain't nothing over there because you've been there 10 times and you've never found anything. Which way are you gonna go? Well, go where, you know, go where, go where the action is. That doesn't mean you never go over here and see if the guy with the gun guarding the sheep is maybe gone today. You might go over there then. Here's your, here's your spot, go in there, and if you keep eating caribou and you find it, and you can keep eating caribou, why would you go anywhere else? Get too fat, I guess. Then you might need to go work it off over here in the desert. And once in a while, if you go in the desert, you might find the hidden jewel. But you don't want to spend all your time over here wasting it, right? You'll starve. You'll die of thirst. <laughs> Picking business is the same way. Don't go to the wrong places. Sure, there's a thrift store two blocks from your house and you've been there 20 times and every time you go, you make a nickel. It's so comfortable. All I have to do is drive down there and roll in there and I can be home before four o'clock before Judge Wapner's on or Jeopardy. But guess what? You ain't making no money. You need to venture out where the action is. For us, 
it used to be three plus hours away in Denver, Colorado. It would have been much easier just to go to all the little city rummage sales around where we're at and you know we'd go there and we'd struggle to spend a couple hundred dollars and we might make a couple hundred dollars occasionally we might make four hundred dollars profit on that but we're driving out there we're spending the whole day and 75 percent of these little knickknack rummage sales out there got nothing and after you go to a town a couple of times there ain't much left because you picked it clean the last couple times and so the predator goes out there and pretty soon the predator's got to say wait a minute this is not yielding enough and then we w started to go into denver and in denver it's such a big metropolis we got so many things we're looking for we go to the flea market there we can always get a couple carts full of good stuff good saleable double triple your money stuff and occasionally we find super duper stuff we've pulled some stuff out of there that all the other sheep walked by that's just mind-blowing. $50 purchase, sell for $950. I bought a, a, some kind of a musical round horn that turned out to be some kind of a loudspeaker that turned out to be $950, and I bought it for $50. Bucks. Cameras you buy for $50 or $100 that sell for $600, you know? Lots of stuff. I mean, we've been there 50 times. We've pulled out 25 of the greatest items you could ever imagine. Everyone could have a nice story after it. You, you start to forget some of them. There's so many good ones. But along the way, we go there and we just, two carts, two shopping carts every time, filled up with good, saleable stuff. Make your week, make your money, make your daily money, make your weekly money. List, 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 sell, sell, sell. Go where the action is. For us, that's a good place. Now, we have other places that we've developed that there's action. In fact, there's so much action there, I can't handle it all. <laughs> Imagine that. And if that fails, if that goes away, I'll just go back to my other action and I'll develop some more. I mean, look at somebody. Recently, I've been watching this Rene dude who came into uh, the Storage Wars TV show, season three, four, five, somewhere in there. He's a big, stout dude. He's got a wife with some cannons. <laughs> and uh, you watch some of his YouTube videos, that guy has so much stuff, he doesn't know what to do with it. Now, he has cash flow. All right, here's the deal with, with the Rene guy, if you know who he is. He was a good picker before he got to Storage Wars. And he was a real picker. And Storage Wars is just part of his game and part of his understanding. Then Storage Wars brought him a lot of extra cash flow. I don't know what they pay him per episode, but he all of a sudden had pretty much unlimited money to spend on inventory. And he was smart enough to install some people working his shop, uh, people you know listing his stuff on eBay, whatever he's doing to get that throughput, he can go out there and he can just buy anything smart enough when he buys those things as the predator that he's looking for the best and he buys it so in one sense I follow him he's the leader of the pack he's one of those leaders out there but the sheep the people that are watching that TV show and saying oh it's all fake or the people that watch his YouTube channel go no way did he buy that you know that's just crazy this is fake or, you know, I couldn't do that, or whatever. They don't even relate to him. Just like a lot of people don't even relate to me. I have trouble relating to him in some senses because of the stuff he finds. I know it's out there. He's in California. He's in such a huge, crazy market. If you can make sense of that and have the cash flow to pull it off, I know there's good stuff there. I know there's crazy stuff there. Ten cents on the dollar. I know there's good stuff there. But a lot of people, they don't, they, they just can't even relate to that. And I know Renee and his wife, they just keep going and going and going like the Energizer buddy. They don't even see 90% of the distractions out there. They're, you know, they're, they're one of the best at ignoring all that stuff. Go where the action is. All right, where are we at? One more pause, 10 more minutes, we'll be done. 
I say I try to keep this at an hour, and then I go to edit it, and the last one was like an hour, and, I don't know, 12 minutes or something, so. Get me wound up, whoa. <laughs> Are you having fun? <laughs> I have fun doing this, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, again, if you haven't given me a thumbs up and you are having fun, how about it? Ooh, get some of those too. <laughs> Probably don't like the Packers. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, ooh, slow. So if your business is slow, if you were like me going out to the citywide rummage sales in my area and you had been there year after year and you're starting to realize these aren't yielding enough if your thrift store all of a sudden isn't yielding enough like goodwill a few years back five years back they changed a lot of their strategies and they started pulling the good stuff out and they left the crap if that's happening anywhere you're going if you're not getting the results if it's slow guess what the predator explores and uses some of their time to venture out. That led us to many different places, many different states, many different cities. Uh, you know, we asked people, where is the action? Here's what we're looking for. Where do we find it? And we went places and we observed and we took notes and we bought some stuff and we dealt with some people and we built some relationships and a lot of the relationships that we've built in the denver area were built off the flea market for example or from some of our other stops there or from just systematically stopping all different places and it's interesting even in the eight nine years that I've been doing this as a focused get out and do this uh, how much change has happened I can I can name people that were in the game big time selling in the game big time buying and they're gone never see them again stores gone places gone they're gone so things do change so you do need to venture out explore if you're a predator you got a plan B if you're a predator and your your main meal ticket plan A goes away, you got to develop another one. You can't just fold. During that time, you might have to suck it up. You might have to slow your spending on your personal goods. You might have to uh, put aside some things that are important to you temporarily. You might have to talk to your friends and family and say, "Look, my plan A just went away. Uh, I don't have a cushy job." I need to find another plan A and you need to get on it. Okay? Predators do. They don't have bad months. They don't have real bad months. They don't have bad quarters. Plan B. Find another plan A. Talk to people. All right. I should uh, capture caption that with talk to people about what's important for you but include them in the conversation asking people do you know where the good stuff is and then if you know some of the good stuff you start talking about it you find somebody who knows some stuff about that you ask them questions find out where the good stuff is find out who's selling it find out where they're selling it when somebody sells at the flea mark market talk to them about where else they're selling Ask them some questions. Get some advice. Find out if they're the person that has the mountain of goods. Maybe you can go in and pick that. Some people at the flea market, they're just trying to get rid of a mountain of goods and every week they just bring out a little bit. They look back and there's a mountain of goods. They can't bring it all out at once. They don't know what to do. They're just selling it a, a trailer load at a time. Sheep, when they go there, they go there and say, oh, here's this dude. He's got some interesting stuff. I'll buy this one item. They don't talk to the person. They go away. They come back next week. He's got a whole new mountain of goods. And they're like, oh, there's another one item. I'll buy that. And they go away. 
I go there, I see, hey, here's stuff I like. I like this, this, this. Do you have any more? Why, yes, I have a mountain of goods. Really? Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Can we get together? I want it all. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I see him next week. He brings stuff I want. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got it in the truck. It's not even out. It's waiting for me to go look at it. Because I pay dollars for stuff. I don't ask him dumb questions like, Hey, uh, I had one of these in the 1950s, and it was kind of like this, and Uncle Henry used to uh, do this with it, and uh, oh, wow, I can't believe how excited I am about it. Uh, I'll have to think about it. <laughs> I don't do that. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. What are you asking for that? Does it work? Do you know anything about it? Do you have anything that goes with it? Okay, I'll buy that. And then I go on to the next thing with them. And I keep them engaged. And then I find out they got a mountain of stuff. Predator. I want it all. <laughs> oh. Okay. Now one thing, when you get better at this, if you get better at this, and if you stick with it and take notes and make mistakes and make some scores and learn and copy others that are doing well and persevere and extend yourself a little bit, uh, grow your, your personal skills, you will stumble on some of the most unbelievable days of your life. We've probably had 20. And each time they don't necessarily get bigger, but over time they get bigger, crazier. You, you get in there and you're like, wow, I have just stumbled on the best day ever for picking, right? Predators realize that there will be days like that. And predators realize that when they get into those situations, you need to make that the best day ever. If you are having a headache that day, if you are fighting with your spouse, if your car just ran out of gas, if your wallet is empty, if your shoes got holes in them, if you just kick something and your foot hurts, whatever it is, and you happen on this thing, and you don't recognize it for what it is, and you can't put all this other stuff aside, you will not capitalize in it. You are not a predator. You will not succeed. <laughs> You, you need one good score or more a year in this business. I can go back eight years and every single year, if I think hard enough, I'm getting kind of old and foggy up here, I can think of one or two big scores we used to have per year that would carry us for the whole year. Everything else was, you know, little score, little score, little score, little score, good stuff, little score, little score, and then every year, boom, there it was. And if you don't catch that one, if you don't capitalize it, if you're not there, if you didn't get out early, if you don't have the money, if you don't have the mindset, if you don't talk to that person and open the back room where there's 10 times what's in the front room, if you don't capitalize on it, if you're not the predator, that will not be your best day. Your best day will be mediocre. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. Again, if you enjoyed it and you want to see more, you could subscribe. We're getting near 5,000 subscribers. That's kind of exciting for me. I don't know why, but it seems like a good number. Thumbs up. Helps the channel. Tell YouTube you want me on the top front page or something like that. <laughs> pick well like a predator or don't pick at all. Dealer out. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer production.